are psychedelic drugs a way of um, expanding consciousness? They can be. Um, and uh, can they facilitate uh, spiritual experience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all psychedelic experiences? Certainly not. Um, but uh, things like ayahuasca, um, DMT, I believe, uh, although I never personally have tried it, uh, the descriptions of it, I believe, yeah. Um, and uh, so can uh, meditation, mindfulness. Um, I don't know about uh, what are those uh, sensory deprivation chambers, but I believe they can help. These are modernist ways of trying to get back to what was readily and easily achievable um, by, uh, within the Christian world by hesychasm. I mean, there was a point when a, uh, when a and there was, there was definitely a period in the West, in the West during the, between the 11th century and the 13th century, where monks were consuming psilocybin, this, this is true, and then people say, oh, Jesus was a mushroom. Just because people, uh, groups of monks a thousand years after um, the death of Christ uh, were consuming psilocybin doesn't, yeah, that doesn't bear on history, but it's a very interesting thing. Was it heretical or blasphemous? Well, no. Um, that was just part of their spiritual discipline. Should does that mean, oh, anybody should be able to do that and get... No, because, again, they were in a specific setting. They used it for a specific purpose. It's the difference between an Amazonian Indian tribe using ayahuasca and some club kid. Maybe I'm dating myself because club kids are from, like, the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, taking, you know, a bunch of ayahuasca and DMT, and then when he comes down from it, you know, selling it and then killing somebody who tried to screw him over on a deal. You know, what spiritual experience did he get out of that? What tie to his ancestors did he get from that? Um, so yeah, the um, where was I going with this again? I didn't know where I was going with this. Um, yeah, the um, but the uh, the discipline of um, the monks. Uh, especially uh, the stylite, stylites, as well as uh, um, just the monastic mindfulness that people have forgotten, and all of a sudden people are talking about mindfulness, and then speaking about vipassana uh, and um, Zen, and it's like you guys never heard of hesychism. Oh, that's right, because it was blotted out from our teachings, and it wouldn't have been taught in any Western Christian church, but readily available. But Available in all Eastern churches. There was a uh, monk one time. I don't know if he was a novice or if he was actually took his vows, but he was sitting in his cell and he was practicing mindfulness. And um, he uh, he had this great thing happen to him apparently. And he ran to the abbot and he said, "Father, Father, I can see through walls. I have been." Uh, you could contemplate, uh, uh, same contemplating. I have been, um, observing the now and, um, you know, basically it's all just like, I don't want to say it's just like Vipassana and just like Zen because Zen is not Vipassana and Vipassana is not Zen, but you get the idea. Practicing this form over hours he says I can see through walls and the abbot said don't worry that'll go away again this is not the goal of, of uh, mindfulness of, uh, of sitting of, of, the, of the waking um, awareness um, it's not the point um, now uh, mindfulness has become a fad which ir is irritating um Although it's not as irritating to me as, as many things. I mean, people call everything mindfulness, but when they, if, if that causes somebody to find a true way to do it, whether they find it through Vipassana or Zen, 
which again places the teach that I think could be very dangerous because it's very makes it very susceptible to a cult. But if you have a good, good um, teacher and you know when you can say, okay, I've, I'm good with this group, and it should be um, a four to six month period that you get all the essentials and you say, okay, now I can go on my own. But also, it should be guided. Uh, it should be put in the moral backdrop or in the the cultural backdrop of your culture and the priorities and responsibilities of your culture, right? Instead of just running away to India and shaving your head and some yogi is God and then you realize he had sex with a bunch of underage people and he has 15 Rolls Royces. That's not the benefit of uh, mindfulness. That's just hypnotizing yourself and becoming a slave. Mindfulness might be called a form of hypnotism, but it's extremely useful. And again, I mistrust monasteries, um, but uh, as Gregory Palomas had said uh, over 700 years ago, this is, a, this, is, this is from the beginnings of our tradition, beginnings of Christianity, actually maybe even predating it, what he calls the pre-Christian world. Um, and uh, the pre-Christian Christians, pre-Jesus Christians, basically, and uh, and that doesn't mean like the Greeks and stuff. This means like uh, Joachim and jo- Joaquin and Anna, um, the Baptist, uh, and the meditations of uh, of the elders. Um, but this form of practice is extremely helpful. Again. Um, we really again I've always been critical of this of the, of the monasteries and the harsh control a bad abbot the, the destruction and damage a bad abbot can do to a sincere and devout follower um, but uh, yeah so um, again this will just be another one of the topics and I'll, I'll finish this conversation in the uh, the planned um expansion of this channel um, and uh, hopefully I can get funding for it because I don't even have a laptop right now and my means to get one I don't have the means you know or the ends I guess you'd call it the uh, the Skrilla that paper um, so I'll set up a Patreon um, definitely and I might even give out um, gifts or uh, rewards or whatever on top of making a video um, because I don't, you know, I don't think you get some, should get something for, uh, you should, you know, I shouldn't get something and give you nothing, right? I mean, the point of it is to build up the, not necessarily myself, but the channel and the message, all right? And, uh, all the other Eastern, um, and Oriental, um, Orthodox have been, have vanished from here, Gambler, David P. with them, and so we're left with many crackpots out there. Um, so uh, I hope you get behind me in this, um, and uh, it'll be under, um, you know, El Cadorce, Victoriano Ramirez, Sandinista. Um, I probably should put this up on um, that, that channel as well as uh, uh, the uh, Yusuf Reyes channel. All right. Um, peace to you. May God save Serbia, Syria, and Ireland. And I believe this will be beneficial to the atheist and the anti-theist as well. Um, again, we believe, well, I'll get into that into later a bit, but I think uh, the people who will be shocked by it the most would be the Shia, um, the Ibadi, the Zoroastrians, the Yazidi, the Mandaean, the Hindu, and the Buddhist. Um, because uh, they will hear an, a, an Eastern or Oriental Orthodox speak and speak no hostility about them and actually talk about the uh, very helpful things that those uh, traditions gave to the world and in many ways are closer to us than um, those who identify as Christians under the sectarianism of, of uh, Protestant uh, Western Protestant, Western modern Protestantism, 
and the uh, even though that uh, our uh, yes uh, we will be uh, speaking of the Nicene Creed and the ancient uh, ancient Christian documents and things like that and no we won't be going into any liberalism but ancient the ancient Eastern wisdom is not liberalism, nor is it New Ageism. It predated all of that, just as the Bible predates science. All right, peace to you. May God save Serbia, Syria, and Ireland.